Uh, hello, my name is Matthew, and I just read Silver Blaze by Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. It's part of my uh, Sherlock read-along with Steve Donahue to read all the Sherlock Holmes short stories in the month of March. And this is the first of the next series of short stories. Uh, the, the first series um, were the adventures of Sherlock Holmes, and there were 12 of them. Now we're moving on to the memoirs of Sherlock Holmes. And since I'm reading them in such quick secession, I, I was curious to see if there was going to be any change in um, uh, tone or writing style or anything like that. So far, this, this short story is just another great um, great addition to the, the case book of Sherlock Holmes. And this one, uh, the, the case of Silver Blaze, is the, the second short story, I believe, where uh, the culprit, uh, the, the cause of the murder, uh, was an animal. And I can't help but think about the, uh, <laughs> the Edgar Allan Poe uh, short story where uh, the big reveal is the orangutan, which is one of the most unsatisfying, uh, deflating conclusions to a detective story. And now we have two by uh, 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 Sherlock Holmes, to Arthur Conan Doyle. Uh, the first one was a black adder, a, a snake, a poisonous snake that bit a woman. It was sent in by that villainous uh, stepfather. And then in this, and then the one that we're reading today, or the one that I just read, Silver Blaze, um, it ends up that the, the horse uh, kicked the man in the head who uh, at the beginning we believed was uh, murdered by somebody and there's a reversal there. This, this story begins with uh, Sherlock being at, at, the, at the forefront of the case. He's, he's the one that's uh, heard about it. He's the one telling us uh, about the case. We're learning all of the facts through Sherlock and re reading the papers uh, while Sherlock and Watson are on their way to the countryside. And this is a, um, a horse racing story. There's a big horse race event coming up in England and there's a stable that has this horse named Silver Blaze, which is um, a, ch a champion horse, very well known. Um, I don't know much about horses, but my first thought was a horse that's comparable to uh, Secretariat or Seabiscuit, the only two horses that I know. <laughs> and um, the local authorities um, are, are on the case trying to figure it out. Uh, two main events ha have happened. Um, one of the stable boys, um, one of the caretakers of the horses, uh, Straker, has been murdered. And the other event is that the horse, Silver Blaze, the champion horse, has gone missing. And many of the uh, points of the story, the details, are, are well known. There, there were people there, strange things uh, happened. Um, there, there is evidence, there's um, uh, a, a potential, there, there's a suspect. And we, we get all of the information. So there's a small stable, there's a few stable boys, there's a maid, we have uh, John Straker, who, who was murdered, and his, his wife. Uh, they, they live um, very close by, just a few miles away. And uh, these horses, um, there's maybe four other, there's like four horses in this stable, Silver Blaze being one of them, are... Um, fairly well guarded, as well as they can guard them, uh, because they are so uh, valuable and prized. And so there's um, these uh, shifts that go on where stable boys um, have to be on, on guard, and the, the rest of them can, can sleep in the loft. And the maid brings out the food, they're having uh, curried mutton. <laughs> um, and late at night, there's um, an intruder. Someone just shows up on the property, um, 
kind of barging his way in, wants to talk to people. It seems like um, he he's um, trying to bribe the stable boy, and uh, he has a confrontation with uh, one of the maids. He comes up to the window where um, Straker, or uh, one of the stable boys, is uh, eating his curried mutton, and uh, lots of events unfold. The points of which are uh, unknown to everybody, including the reader, because the next morning, uh, Straker has gone uh, missing. The horse is missing. It's out of the stable. Um, they find um, the, the first thought with a, with a panicked group of uh, stable boys and the wife is there looking for her husband is generously. Maybe he uh, very early took the horse out uh, for practice or exercise. And they, they go out into the field, they find his overcoat on a post, and then later on they, they find his body in a ditch. And those are the facts that we um, are learning on the train ride. Sherlock gets there, there's the, the colonel, the, the owner of this whole operation, very much interested in where the horse is, and who murdered um, Straker. And Sherlock is brought in as a consultant. The lieutenant uh, there brings them all together. Sherlock is this uh, great detective, and he's going to uh, help help on the case. And uh, with all of his unusual methods and eccentricities, throughout the story, uh, the colonel becomes more and more impatient that uh, Sherlock is being acting very strangely and has not um, progressed the case at all. And we also get uh, Sherlock telling the story and then Watson being the one asking questions and Sherlock being very happy with um, the, the, the train of thought that Watson is having. Um, Sherlock likes to play these games with Watson um, to help him improve his powers of perception and so someone will walk out the door to chase somebody and Watson will say did they lock the door before they left or was it unlocked and Sherlock goes oh very good very good um, there's also a dog on the premises like the guard dog who um, Sherlock um, asks if anyone heard the dog and the dog was uh, very the dog was silent no one heard the dog which uh, was a clue to Sherlock and not a clue to anybody else. And, uh, and, and there's a suspect that they have, and he has uh, damning evidence that um, he clearly uh, murdered Straker. He was involved in um, kidnapping the horse. Um, he, was, he was found, um, uh, the, the, the dead body was found with the, the handkerchief of, of this suspect and uh, he, he was there at the time of the night of the crime and uh, all these things say it's it's got to be him and the first thing Sherlock does is start investigating the horse and he uh, looks at these uh, particulars and the, the evidence that they have and um, starts wandering off um, and he finds a trail and so Sherlock and Watson are hot on the trail and he comes up to the neighboring uh, stable that has their own um, cast of horses that are going to be in the same big race. And uh, horse racing um, has a, a lot of money involved. People are betting on these things, and the odds are very important, and who's going to be in the, the races. And people make fortunes with these um, horse races and horse bets. And is a great interaction between um, the the head of the neighboring stable and and Sherlock when they meet. He whispers. He wants to throw him, the the head of the stable wants to throw him off the property, and Sherlock whispers something in his ear. So they go into the stable. He comes out ashen. He goes, "I'll do whatever you say. I'll do whatever you say." And uh, Sherlock goes, "Okay, you know, we, we've uh, we've wrapped that up," and. Uh, at some point, everybody comes together, and Sherlock says, 
uh, okay, the horse is going to race on the, on the, de on the, uh, on racing day, the horse will be there, um, everything's taken care of, I said, well, what about the murder? He said, well, I figured that out too, everything's figured out, but you all have to wait, because, uh, it's more dramatic this way, and, uh, the day of the race, um, everyone's there, hotly anticipating, there's no horse, no silver blaze, and then, when they're all lined up, I don't know what it's called, but when they're all lined up to, to pull the gate, uh, a different, uh, differently marked horse is there, and it wins the race. Um, uh, the colonel who uh, had silver blaze is uh, happy because uh, the horse in that place won, but it's still not silver blaze. Turns out it was painted. It was like, uh, the horse was in disguise, uh, and then. The next point is, well, who, who murdered um, the Straker character? And it was the horse. So <laughs> Straker uh, was not um, as innocent and as um, uh, reliable as we were led to believe. And, and instead, he had his uh, own motives and um, a secret identity and a double life. Uh, there's been a couple of stories so far where people have these double lives. Um, He's off bunburying. <laughs> and in the middle of the night, he took the horse out um, to try to make a small incision into one of, it, one of its tendons uh, to cause it to go slightly lame. And uh, Sherlock uh, asked a question because he had um, a, a hunch that there were uh, sheep around that were going lame, showing, showing that Stricker was practicing this operation uh, before he did it on the horse, and he wanted to take the horse out in, in the middle of the night, uh, so any noises that might come out would just go into the open air, no one would hear it. Uh, the dog didn't make any sound because he's familiar with everybody in the household, and it goes wrong, the horse kicks him in the head, gets frightened, and runs off, and is found by the neighbor. Uh, the neighbor, uh, thought about bringing the horse back, but then decided to keep it until after the race, thought, no harm done, they'll still get their horse, but uh, I'm going to win the race. <laughs> and also, so that, that that's the um, principal points of this very singular case, but there was also um, a literary illusion, which um, I, I was unfamiliar with. So there's a line in this uh, Silver Blaze story um, and that the quote is um, the, the curious case of the dog in the nighttime. And I didn't realize that uh, the novel by Mark Haddon uh, of, of the same quote, the, the curious case of the dog in the nighttime, was a, a reference to a Sherlock Holmes story. Maybe it's more well known, but oh, it's so beautiful. Look at her. Daphne. <laughs> That's great. Um, and just great fun, a great um, mystery, and there was an adventure. We had a horse race scene where the horses are going around the bend, and they're on the straightaway. Um, and I, I love that um, having something ridiculous like that, having an orangutan be the murderer, having a snake be the murderer, have a horse be the murderer. This one was the strongest um, of the two. The, 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 the one with the snake um, was a far-fetched, of course, but um, not, not the greatest landing of um, the, the surprise, impossible murder. Uh, this one uh, having a horse kick someone in the head for doing something that he shouldn't be doing um, works much, much better um, in the realm of being um, outlandish and also um, plausible, grounded in some uh, conceivable reality. Uh, so, Silver Plays by uh, Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. Um, still great fun, still loving it. If you've read it, please let me know what you think. So uh, thank you for watching. Please leave a comment if you would like and take care. Bye.